Welcome back to the workshop. It's tuning time again. Uh, on the seventh attempt, the um, open inverter board let me flash firmware back onto it. So I've got access to the parameters again. I didn't need to get out my dongle. It's today's innuendo. Uh, and managed to do it through the web interface. Don't know why it didn't work the first six times. Um, but effectively turning it off, turning it on again, going straight into an upload, eventually it worked. So back in there, I've got version 4.94 on there now for some manual tuning. I'm going to try and set sync offset properly for our new setup um, of the phase wires. Why it should be different, don't know. Um, but let's get that sorted, have a play, and then maybe play with some new firmware as well. Just been through the um, FOC, field oriented control tuning process. Um, in order to do that, if you've not done it before, you basically get the inverter into manual run mode, make sure that your contactors are closed, uh, which for me means going into run mode and then into manual run mode. Uh, make sure you've got your direction switch set, um, in ideally forward. Um, set your uh, sync offset at zero, or arbitrary value really, but at zero. Put some current in using the manual ID setting. Let me show you that. This is on the interface down. Here. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. Down at the bottom here. And your wheel should start to turn. You then change your sync offset until the wheels stop turning. And then gradually increase your manual ID and tweak your sync offset until the wheels don't turn, even when you're putting in about half your motor's max rated current. And that is where your one of your two possible offsets is. So I've just been through that process now. I've set the sync offset at 57,500. Seems to be about right for this. I went up to 150 amps on manual ID. Now time to put it back into run mode, jump in the car without taking off the jack stands yet and just see what happens on the throttle. Wheels are spinning backwards, which is strange, but we can fix that. Just a quick tweak. Um, if your wheels are spinning the wrong way, you just knock 3,200, no, 32,768 off your sync offset or add it to it, whichever one leaves you with a number between naught and 65,000, whatever it is. Um, so now we're at 24,732 and Wheels are spinning the right way. Seems smooth, it's kind of hard to tell um, on jack stands. Um, so probably time to drop it off the jack stands and go for another test run. So that works. It's very smooth. Absolutely gutless. Way less power than before. Time to do some more tweaking. Right, I've stuck the car back on the latest firmware, not the latest experimental firmware, but the latest firmware. Uh, I'm gonna have to try and get home now, see how it performs, see if it's any better, um, because I really need to do a charge before I do any more experimentation. I'm running a bit low on battery, so I'm gonna just cruise gently home and see what happens. See you in a bit. So for this test, I've stuck sync offset back to 57,500, and just, I'm using the direction switches in reverse. It seems to be a bit livelier, which is strange. Yeah, much livelier. Nice and smooth as well. You can definitely get home like this, assuming no more disasters.
sets off nicely in second. Actually, this is as well as this car's ever performed, I think. <laughs> yeah, this is much better. <laughs> now, this is before I've even tried the experimental firmware, which is what I'm going to do when I've got a charge which starts mucking around with the max torque per amp parameters. Fixes potentially some issues with the algorithm uh, inside the open inverter firmware. Based on some work by a man called Pete on the forum, who seems to be very clever, who built a simulator of the firmware and motors, etc., so we could test things out. But yeah, this is much better. I didn't go and get my tracking done, clearly. Oh, this is like... This is kind of what I hoped this car would be like. It's got a turn of speed as well. The 0 to 60 runs in this are going to be interesting once we've got some juice in the cells. It's a completely different car. Have to be careful because there's a police car up ahead. What a glorious sunny day to be out in a soft top. I'm liking that I can do everything in seconds. Just need my sunnies now. Hmm. Tempted to add some regen. If you've built your own EV, you know exactly how good this feels. But I can't tell you how good it feels having the car perform a bit more like I always wanted. It's still not super fast, we're not talking Tesla performance here. But there's a proper shove in your back when you put your foot down now. Right, that's enough of me waffling. I'll speak to you again when I've got a charge in there see how that new cooling layup or setup works with the uh, charging see if it's keeping the charger a bit cool and whether i can charge at slightly higher amps see you in a bit so i made it back home it was a very fun journey uh charging up now um predictably it's raining um one bit of learning which i'll show you on my screen Um, you can see that the temperature is hitting 56 degrees, even though I'm only charging at 4.8 amps, which means that our charger is not getting cooling, as kind of suspected based on it's effectively being bypassed by that pipe from the radiator uh, to the um, to the reservoir. So um, I'll be taking people's advice. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do yet. Clearly the Inverter looks like it's getting great cooling. The motor seems to be getting great cooling. I don't want to mess with that unnecessarily, and I can't quite see how I could arrange it so that the um, reservoir stays at the high point and move the pump, the main pump. So what I might do is do what I sort of thought about initially, which is put a second pump in. So effectively have a lift pump taking water from the radiator, pushing it through the charger into the reservoir, and then from the reservoir, it goes through the inverter um, and um, 
through the motor and then back to the radiator again. That's probably going to be the simplest option to make sure that our charger is nice and cool. Um, it's probably not the you know, perfect option in an ideal world. They just have the one pump. It's clearly powerful enough. Um, and I'd work out an arrangement for that, but that might even mean uh, rearranging the engine bay. Not sure. Anyway, I'll do whatever's simplest because I'm really happy with the performance now and more to come. Just been driving around and around with a massive grin on my face. So I've done a bit more tuning with the help of the Brains Trust. Uh, cranked up throttle, so the amount of current per percentage of throttle travel up to four and a half. Uh, fine dropped um, throt ramp down because I was getting a few cutouts with that um, which was I was still getting some cutouts even with throt ramp dropped down to about five but not bad very drivable and then I've just put the beta firmware on with the MTPA um, calculations potentially fixed not noticing a major difference but seems to be driving great so in the next video, um, I'll get my um, GPS set up uh, and we'll do some runs, see if we can get it on the motorway again early in the morning and um, see what sort of performance we're getting. Uh, not tried changing gear yet. Um, I've just been doing everything in second. Forward reverse up to 40 miles an hour, absolutely fine. Actually broke traction at about 20 miles an hour uh, with my foot down. That's certainly never happened before. Um, so yeah, exciting. Um, this It's now driving like the car I always wanted, really. Um, don't want much more performance than this, necessarily. Um, certainly not without a bit more uh, traction control and uh, a good check of the tyres and the brakes. Um, but it's going in for its MOT soon anyway, so it'll get all of that. So thanks for watching. I um, hope you enjoyed that. I really did. <laughs> and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.